Lagos Chamber of Commerce and uh, Industry, um, representing uh, the businesses in Lagos, um, we've tried to watch the ongoing debate with keen interest and also consulted with our members. So uh, part of what I'll be saying here is exactly a cons it's, a, it's, a, it's born out of consensus and part of that, that my own uh, personal opinion. Uh, at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce uh, and Industry, autonomy of the CBN is non-negotiable. But the question is, what type of autonomy? What type of autonomy? Of course, we have operational autonomy, we have instrumental autonomy, and we have financial autonomy. At this point, the agenda here is financial autonomy. Of course, the um, uh, CBN Act of 2007 is clear, Section 1 is clear on operational autonomy. That is, ability to manage the economy, inflation, exchange rate, uh, regulate the banks, as the case may be, without inter interference of executives and the legislation. But what happens to the financial autonomy? The same revised budget, the 2007 budget, was clear that um, the central bank should submit uh, to the legislatures uh, the <coughs> financial statements, annual financial statement and account to them, although that is a history. Mm. That is historical. We are talking about proactive uh, financial statement at this, at this time. Um, and for the fact that Central Bank has got a lot of power, like he, uh, the Senator rightly said, to do lots of some money. I want to put into perspective, from 2010 to date, 1.5 trillion Naira was spent by the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria intervening in various sectors of the economy. For example, bank, about 620 billion naira flowed into the banks. I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, the legislatures were part of the process, either in terms of consultation or debate before the money was released. Of course, it is not the president's money, it is my money, your money, Absolutely. taxpayers' money. And uh, we say we are copying some advanced countries and model, like the, CBA, like the, uh, the Cent uh, uh, Federal Reserve Bank of uh, America and we, we uh, during the crisis, the American crisis, the meltdown. The first tranche during Bush was debated. You remember when McCain and uh, mm. and uh, Obama okay. after uh, uh, maybe uh, cut their campaign trail to go to Washington to uh, vote. Uh, the same thing happened when, during, the, during the second tranche. About 1.3 trillion dollar also flowed about. The senators were carried along. Mm -hmm. So we want a situation at the level of a uh, private sector where. Our money, taxpayers' money, there is a sort of consultation with the legislatures. And, what, and um, again, somebody will say, when you are consulting the, the senators or the legislature, is it not going to take a lot of time before you know, a crisis may happen and we need to intervene? And the idea is, if it is possible, one, to strengthen the corporate governance of the CBN a little bit more, more than what we have in the, in the 2007 Act, by... Uh, 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 having a legislative representation at the at the board. Today we have um, uh, independent five independent board members, two from Ministry of Finance, um, you know, to make sure that there is harmony between monetary and fiscal policy, as the case may be. Uh, I think we have to establishment of intervention, CBN special intervention fund, also have to be there. You know, we don't really subscribe to any action, whether it is uh, uh, whether it is bailout or monetary policy that CBN have to rush to uh, the legislatures to say this is what I want to do. No, but if they have a legislative representation at the board as independence, and uh, also have something like a special uh, intervention fund, you know, approved for the CBN to to draw down when they, whenever there is. Uh, 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 crisis in the economy. So you're talking approved about by being approved. <coughs> approved. approved by the by the Senate, by the, by the uh, legislature. Yeah. National that's what passed assembly. through National Assembly. That's okay. what we're, that's what so we're saying. So the CBN governor would not have been able to donate that hundred million that he did without a recourse to anybody. Yeah, in the new suggestion, uh, no. In the new suggestion, no. Okay. Yeah. Now the five thousand naira bill. Um, Everyone who is anyone in the economy of Nigeria spoke. But it took for the National Assembly to say something before the CBN decided to put a hold on it. 
What's your comment on that? Uh, that's in light of what we're talking that's about before, now. Before the president put a hold on it, not not the CBN. The okay. President the president now being the, 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 the supervisor of the CBN, as it were, yes. you know, yes. so said, listen, okay, on balance of opinion, let's let's slow it down. Uh, but before I go into that, I'll quickly say that, um, you know, um, contrary to my erudite uh, ogre, you know, uh, Mr. Les Lever, who's here, um, uh, the, the idea behind intervention um, is, uh, uh, the idea behind intervention is not necessarily to grow the economy. Uh, when the central bank or any central bank in the world intervenes in financial markets to prevent the cataclysm, to present what they call a systemic crisis. You're not hoping to grow the economy then. The economy is in free fall. Uh, people are going to get to the banks and not be able to withdraw their money. We remember what happened in Argentina, in different places, in the Asian crisis and so on. You don't want people to take their pots and pans to the banks and start banging. You know. So what you do is you move in uh, very quickly. And that's one of the problems that may happen if you subject uh, the, the decisions of the CBN or the central bank in, in general to the rigmarole of the National Assembly. Uh, however, it must be said, you know, like the, my, my, well, I'm not, I'm not Leonard, but he's Leonard, you know. Uh, like he has said, the lawyer, you know, it, it, it's very good to dialogue. And when you dialogue, you find that the solutions will happen. My problem with the approach right now is that there's so much anger. And when you're angry, you, you're almost blind. It becomes almost a blind rage. Sometimes he has suggested, he has suggested like, oh, you can't first-hand information on the board or whatever, you know, and then it makes it quite neater. And there's nothing wrong, really, if Nigeria can evolve a system that may be slightly different from what obtains in the U.S. Yeah. or in Europe. Yeah. And it becomes a Nigerian system and something that works, and then we don't have all the anger on the street. So to a large extent, one of the key problems and the reasons why central banks need the independence is to be able to intervene quickly in the financial markets. Uh, because, for example, I mean, if you bank MDs lost their shirts the other time, uh, if you were talking, uh, if, if you had to go to the National Assembly as structured with the present system, we will still be debating because the man from the constituency say, look, this MD is from my constituency. You can't remove him, it's from my constituency. And you know what will happen? The entire system will seize up. And you don't want to have that. It's not going to be funny. So you see, in fact, let's remember with hindsight, you know, at times when something good happens, um, but, you know, at times some very good things happen, they're, they're kind of often intangible. The reason why we still have banks today and we, don't have, we didn't have that huge problem was because the central bank was able to intervene and put that $620 billion or thereabouts in the financial market. It had its own mm -hmm. effects then. And I'll let you know, usually it will have a slightly inflationary effect, okay, because what you have done is made so much money available to these banks to be able to draw from, and then you are, you are kind of increasing money circulation. But everybody pays for it, okay, because of inflation. But that said, it was something that was absolutely important to do then. Otherwise, it would not be funny. Yeah, of course, you don't want... See, uh, I worked in the bank for about 13, 14 years. I've, I've, I met... Uh, when I worked in a bank which was revived from, from a dead one. And some family of a certain customer came. A customer who could not withdraw his money be on his sick bed and had to die because the bank... What, what's having problem? He had money in the bank. He, can't, he couldn't pay for his operation. And he had money in the bank and he had to die. How many tens of thousands of that kind of things would have happened? Therefore, you need a central bank that can act, a regulator that can act like this, the on the spur of the moment. Now to your question of the 5,000. And, and that's a big question. You finally got there. Yes. You know, so, so basically, you see, let me tell you, the, the, the thing about the 5,000 is it's fine. Uh, a lot of opinions have, uh, have come up. Like, like I said again, most of that have been based on anger. Um, I personally did not see anything wrong in the 5,000. Perhaps, yes, they could, the, the central bank could have spent more time educating the people. And what we actually need is just education. And, and I tell you what, the, 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 the thing is this. Uh, and, and however, the central bank alone cannot do that education. Myself, yourself, your program, enlightened people needed to do the education. But what we did instead was we miseducated the public. And by that, I mean that if someone comes to me and says, by just putting money in circulation, 5,000, inflation will go up. I ask, how? How is inflation going to go up just because someone printed a currency and begins to, you know, how? Now, if you're able to explain to me how, perhaps you say, oh, the best argument you can give me is that, um, you know, the way our people think, aha, 
Now, now, therefore, what we need to do is to try and influence the way our people think. In which case, I'm saying that, that the government will try so much. But there's more and more responsibility devolving to us as, as individuals to, to, to stand in the gap, to do what is right. There's no way that they, introducing 5,000 will not cause inflation. Okay? That's clear. But, you know, the coin aspect of it may cause inflation because of the way our people think. Now, our people believe that, some people actually said, oh, we've grown past coins. We've moved ahead of coins. In fact, we cannot be going back again. We have to go forward. When they have not gone past coins in, in the Europe where the coin and note system was introduced into Nigeria, in America they still use their coin. And we must bring coins in. Any central bank governor, whether this one or whoever will come after him, must think about currency management expenses. That is a core function you must think about. And you must think about reducing the currency management expenses. If you don't, then you're not doing your job. You're kidding. Okay, therefore, and in order to manage your currency very well and reduce that expense, what you need to do is to find one way or the other to bring in the coin. So if, and my killer argument for, this is, for that is this, bringing in 5,000 will not cause inflation, nor will it cause corruption. Equally, if we, if we decide today... Well, maybe that not cause, but aid. Aid. Oh, just, just a minute. Okay. We even aid. Even if we decide today that we're cancelling 1,000 Naira, which is the biggest denomination, we're cancelling 500, and we're cancelling 200, and the highest denomination Nigerians will spend will be 100 Naira, will it reduce corruption? Will corrupt people stop being corrupt because there's no 1,000 Naira to spend? No, they won't. Will it reduce inflation? No. In fact, the, uh, the operational argument, and I would say,